What I think is the biggest moment for me as a G fan happened when I was about five years old. I had already fostered a fascination with dinosaurs and several monster movies. I can distinctly recall watching the likes of Land Before Time, The Lost World in Jurassic Park, and several Universal monster movies on VHS, mostly as hand-me-downs for my sci-fi fan parents. But when I turned four or five, I heard of a new name. Something that was both a monster and a dinosaur. And not only both, but the biggest and most powerful of all. It blew my little kid mind, as the monsters I had seen up until then were human-sized, and the biggest dinosaurs were all big herbivores. Powerful, yes, but if you dropped a bomb on an Apatosaurus or the Gillman, that would probably do them in. This, of course, was, who else, Godzilla. The first two Godzilla movies I can recall watching that perked my interest were an edited cut of 1998 my father had made for me, doing stuff such as cutting out the infamous Babyzilla's part, and making the ending seem like Godzilla was just driven off by getting torpedoed. And of course, Godzilla King of the Monsters from 1954. They both definitely grabbed my interest, the 1954 film much more so, but up until then I had only seen them on a small screen. That changed when my father took me to see Godzilla 2000 in a local theater after he had heard about them airing it. I can still very distinctly remember this occasion, as it was the first time I can clearly recall seeing a movie in theaters. To say I was ecstatic would be an understatement, seeing this huge gargantuan beast on uh, the biggest screen I had ever seen. But the moment that struck with me the strongest was not actually Godzilla's big entrance, nor the action sequences against the military, or the meat and the bones of the big fight with Orga at the end. It was actually the very ending of that battle. In it, we see Orga open its mouth with the intent of swallowing Godzilla whole like a snake consuming a rat. And Godzilla's reaction is to just stand there staring at it for several seconds. My little kid mind instantly latched onto this, as initially it seemed like a big mistake when he just charged forward like that. But I could tell, even in that relatively unemotive suit, that something was going through his head. Orga starts copying him, and in that instance I thought it would be like some other movies I had seen where the humans would do something to beat the monster, either helping Godzilla out or beating both him and Orga. But nobody does anything. They just watch. And Godzilla starts glowing. Orga now has its turn to take a pause. And in the explosion that followed, we find out this was something Godzilla did on purpose. As the King of the Monsters stood there roaring on the biggest screen I could ever imagine, I was utterly amazed. That's when I realized in this series Godzilla was not just the biggest monster I could ever think of that roars and is practically unbeatable, as impressive as those are. He and the other monsters had a consciousness. They were sapient and able to emote. Godzilla's pause was the gears in his head working to find a solution to a problem, and the thing I love about this moment and what follows is you can interpret it in two very different but very valid ways. Either Godzilla sees Orga as a dire threat he must find a way to keep down for the count, as otherwise the alien monster will keep regenerating time after time after time until Godzilla gives out and he finds his solution. Another, more silly way you could interpret it is Godzilla is getting bored and annoyed at this whole situation. Here he is torching this monster and it just won't stay down. He could win, but he doesn't want to waste his time here any longer. His foe is just an annoyance and he thinks up a method to make them go away for good, instead of just constantly beating him down and having Orca pop back up like a kaiju version of Whack-A-Mole. Why won't you die? Either way, the moment Orca realizes it's folly, by the time it is smart enough to make this realization, it's already too late. This is actually one of the times I much prefer the movie adaptation to the otherwise expanded manga adaptation. While I do love the Godzilla 2000 manga for expanding on the characters and giving us some very dynamic fight scenes, 
this sequence played out entirely different there. Orga suddenly grows gigantic as a cancerous mass of flesh and scarfs up Godzilla like the early bird getting the worm. The end result is the same, but here it is solely Orga's folly and not Godzilla's planning that does the alien in. I agree with others, Godzilla 2000 is a very well-made encapsulation of the entire franchise. Not just because I am rather fond of the characters, the special effects, and the plot with all its intricacies and simultaneous simplicity. but because it also embodies a big reason why Godzilla is a cut different than so many other big monsters that came out at both the same time and since. Godzilla wins not because he is both the strongest and biggest monster I had ever seen up until that point, but because he is also much smarter than otherwise you would think. So many other movie monsters I had seen had the big dumb monster get overcome by the smart humans in the end. Even monsters that can think in some capacity, like King Kong or the Gill Man, still get outsmarted by the humans. This was a great big example to me that that would not be the case here. Something further exemplified when Godzilla walks away at the end of the film triumphant. Godzilla is king because he has both brawn and brains. There is a reason Godzilla is so extremely well remembered and the beast from 20,000 Fathoms is relatively obscure, even if both movies are great. In the end, the beast is just a monster and nothing else. Godzilla is a character.